what we're doing today. We are going to take a systematic approach to trying to figure out who is the most complex main Disney movie villain in their entire catalog. And we're going to do that by breaking down the main categories which I believe that these villains can fit into. So there are three, as you can see here, these unfilled spots, which I will fill right now. The first one, there are villains who only care about power. power villains. The ones who only want, they just want the status. They want the money, the power, because all those are kind of equivalent in a way that they can abuse. And that's their main goal. That's all they care about. All right, the second category, and in my opinion, a little bit more of an interesting category to see these villains tend to be a little bit more fun, in my opinion. The ones who only care about pleasure, pleasure villains. And the last one, this is a category of villain that, in my opinion, has gotten more popular over the years because people tend to view these villains as the most complex, the most compelling, maybe the most relatable, and that is what I'm going to call the what I must do villain. The villains who are driven by a sense of duty or a sense of maybe even revenge. Just because that's what they think is right in terms of justice or in terms of loyalty. Or that they're in the right. Maybe they are the heroes of their own story. We're only looking at Disney villains. I have prepped up in the queue Pixar villains because I want to do the same kind of idea after this video so if you would be interested in that please stay tuned that'll come out on my channel uh pretty soon not that long not too big of a wait i'm going to be covering main disney movie villains the main ones or secondary villains if they play a particularly big role in the movie or that they're kind of iconic at least in my opinion for the three main categories, I think most of these villains will actually fit into one of these three categories. Especially the older ones who tend to be a little bit one-dimensional. But I also have like a an intermediary category with two. Because I do think some villains will, of course, embody a blend of these categories. And then there's the all three, which I think is reserved for the most complex villains. Which, uh, in my opinion, there are... There are, are a couple of them, and we have a not applicable down here for those villains who are really just, I mean, they just don't cut it anywhere else. Oh, I actually do have to make this uh, disclaimer. If there's a villain you do not see on here, it is probably because I have not seen that movie, or I just think they're too minor of a character, like that little Dr. Evil guy in Cars 2. I don't, and he's just... Who cares about him? Uh, so I left people like him out of this list. Uh, I left like King John out of this list because I just haven't seen that movie. However, if there is a Disney villain that you think deserves to be on this list and where you think they would place on this list, especially if, in your opinion, they're a complex villain, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Now, finally... Without further ado, let's hop right into this list. We're going to start off with, in my opinion, the quintessential power villain, Star. You know, all he cares about is being king. He'll sacrifice anything to get it. His family, his brother, his nephew, it doesn't matter. He will throw his kingdom into disarray. Nothing matters to him at all except having the title king. I'm sure he knows how he could run the kingdom well, but he doesn't care. He only cares that he has his title. And that's what makes him just a pure power villain. He has no other motivations at all. Gone to this, at least in the Lilo and Stitch original movie, he is an ultimate, it's what I must do villain. It's his job. In his opinion, he's hunting down dangerous experiments. He's hunting down bad guys. He totally thinks he's in the right, at least in this movie. Now, in the series, it's still his job, but he also knows he's working with evil villains. Uh, with Here, let's find him. Hamsterville? What is up with Hamsterville? He's a total... 
It's a bit of its power villain. It's kind of low. Worse than Scar for sure, but Gontu, he gets a little bit more gray as we see more of him in the Lilo and Stitch franchise, but in terms of the original movie, he's absolutely bad. And it's what I must do villain. Now Hamster Veil, vale, he's he's totally a power villain, but he's actually in my opinion, he's not that evil. He could be a lot more evil. He could rule the galaxy, he could hurt people, but I don't know if you've seen all the Lilo and Stitch movies, but he, one time he comes really close to ruling the galaxy and he makes that tall alien lady, he just makes her a receptionist instead of like ruining her life. But I mean, he employs her. So, so for now, he's kind of looking like a bottom level power villain because there might actually be some good in him somewhere. Mother Gothel, absolute leisure villain, I would say. She could honestly, I mean, she's been alive for um, what they imply to be hundreds of years, and she kind of just has been doing the same thing, so I imagine that's what she likes. She just likes staying young. She seems to not be too ambitious, and she definitely, she definitely doesn't have a moral code that would put her in this tier with Gantu, so placing her in pleasure, she's honestly kind of lower on that. I don't know, she's a bit ambiguous, her, ambi her, uh, her motivations. All right, for these dudes, I forget their names. They're going in power. They only care about money. Money's power. But they're super shallow. We don't know anything about them. And that's it. They're at the bottom, in my opinion. This guy. Okay. Okay, bad guy from Mulan. I don't know his... The Hun guy. I don't... What's his actual name? John Yu, there it is. He's totally a power villain. He's super evil in my opinion, obviously. He just kills a dude who's doing his job watching the wall. So, I'll put him above Hamsterville. Because he's, I don't know. There's an argument to be said about villainy. If you think it, a better villain is just more sick and twisted or if you like the grandiosity of a villain like think megamind but for now i'll put him above hamsterville definitely a power villain we don't ever see him having fun or anything he's obviously doesn't have a moral code so now these two from atlantis which in my opinion is a very underrated movie i always really enjoyed it just aesthetically pleasing to me but you know, they both only care about power. They only care about the money. One thing I will say is that these are the twist villains that aren't twist villains. It was obvious the entire time. But, honestly, I do respect that more than what they did with Hans. I mean, Hans completely out of the blue. They could have at least given us a little scene where maybe he, like, snapped at a house servant or something. So that we could know. We could have an inkling that he's a jerk and he's going to turn... On Elsa, not Elsa, Anna, and that maybe that he's trying to use her. But I, I feel like a twist villain needs a little bit of a hint. Anyway, I'm just going to grab him here. He only cares about power. But where do I put him? Uh, I honestly, I really don't like him as a villain. Hmm. John Ratcliffe. Obviously, he only cares about power, but I actually kind of like him. I think his... His songs are fun, and his his little sidekicks are fun. He's a, I mean, he's an absolute, total monstrosity of a jerk. Now, I don't think he's a complex villain at all, but I think for the movie he's in, he's actually kind of fun and a little bit underrated. Callahan, is he absolutely an it's what I must do villain? Thing is, he's searching for revenge for his daughter. Which is completely understandable. But he also knows that it's wrong. I feel like I can only put him here. He's not doing it out of fun. And he's not doing it because he gets anything else out of it. Other than his revenge. I'm sure he feels like he has to do it. But he knows that he's wrong. Obviously he knows he's not a hero. But here he is. I think he could have been a little bit cooler. 
as a side note, I think Big Hero 6 is the most... It's, it's like the benchmark of the middle of the road. The most middle of the road movie that Disney has to offer. Kind of like, along, in my opinion, alongside Meet the Robinsons. It's just like in the middle. It's okay to just put on in the back and not pay attention to. Now, Bellwether, the Melweather, I do not like her as a villain. But I can't deny that I think she's a little bit on the complex side as far as villains go. And you might notice that she's a bit newer than all these other villains who are not in the in the double category. Yes, she's looking for power, but at least in her mind she's doing it for something that can be justified to misled people. So she cares about that power and she feels like she has something that she's got to do for for what she would consider like some kind of cosmic justice. Fantastico. Uh this is this video might be full of interesting takes, but I think the hottest take is that I think he's a really fun villain. He gets a lot more screen time than a lot of other traditional Disney villains. In my opinion, he's the most realistic portrayal of someone who thinks that they're better than everyone else, like a total narcissist, in that they at least try to hide it, like, under the surface, but they just, sometimes they just blow up. Now he, now he actually doesn't, I wouldn't put him here. I mean, I would just put him as a power villain, but I like him, I enjoy him. I'd actually put him here. thing is, in my opinion, if you're hating on him, you're taking it a little bit too serious. And if you look at it in a certain way, he's willing to go to deeper depths than any other villain. Like, yeah, Scar will kill his family. Yeah, Hans will break anyone's heart. It doesn't matter to him. Uh, Ratcliffe will abuse people. But Fantastico, this man, almost without even thinking about it, he just straight up basically sells his soul to stay king. And that's really the only portrayal of a villain we see doing that in the Disney universe, except with one more guy who I think is actually very, a very good villain, a much better villain, way more complex, and we'll get to him later. But for now, we're moving on to the Queen of Hearts. I mean, I don't know what to put her as. I've seen this, I saw this movie, so I put her on here, but it was so long ago. I mean, she's just so basic. I put her down here. I mean, if we were talking about the newer Alice in Wonderlands, might put her here. Honestly, the newer ones might go here. But I'll just put her over here. This might be totally wrong. I just maybe I shouldn't have even included her on this list. Clayton. I mean, I like Clayton. I think people do enjoy Clayton as a total jerk character. But he's like basically around here. He's like anyone else. He's just doing it for the money. He's he's not complex. He's shallow. I mean, he has a some kind of weird inferior inferiority issues, I guess. He's checking out Tarzan. But there ain't much to him actually. Hook, he's a pleasure villain. He's wasting his own time. I'm sure he knows he's wasting his own time just chasing. Anything, whatever. I don't know what's up with him, actually. But I, this is the only place I can think of to put him. He's definitely going right to the bottom. She's not that bad. She's way better than these dudes. So I'll make that little change. This guy. Why is he on this list? I don't even know his name. He's terrible. Not applicable. I mean, technically, he could he could go here, but that just seems... That's shameful to put, put him next to these other villains. This guy's not applicable for sure. Power villain. Just from a past time, she's a... Uh, she's just a little too one-dimensional. Ursula. Ursula loves that power. But she just has so much fun with what she's doing. I think she loves what she's doing. That I would also categorize her as a seeking pleasure villain and a power villain so 
I'll actually put her up here in the two for spot. I think she's way better than Bellwether. A lot, a lot, a lot more fun. She has a song. Bellwether doesn't have a song. And in my opinion, her song is great. Covers of her song are great. And she's just super iconic. Uh, and I'd like to say this just because the character is technically more complex than another character. It doesn't mean that they're a better villain, but in my opinion, more complex villains have the potential to be better. And we do see that fulfilled sometimes. Speaking of complex, someone who is the opposite of that. Golden Claw Boy. Total pleasure villain. Yeah, he just plays with his food against his own better judgment, I'm sure. I know he's a, just a secondary. He's not... I know he's not like a main villain, but this guy's very fun. Everybody loves him, so I'm going to put him at the top here. I mean, it's kind of contentious between these two. He's better in this spot. But for now, I'll keep him. I'll keep him here. Now, this thing. What? I'm not sure what the name is of this enemy creature, but in my opinion, she's the like quintessential not applicable. She's... It's almost like she's not able to control her villainous actions in this movie. Or more like just antagonistic actions. Because the heart was taken from her. If you're not re if you're really not like a, a consciously acting villain, then uh, you're not really a villain. So that's why I put her in the not applicable section. <laughs> I have this guy. I included this guy. Uh, he's a pleasure villain for sure. He's a jerk. He knows it. He's just being mean for his own fun. He's not getting anything out of it. And that's as far as that goes. He's at the bottom. Evil sentient bowler hat. Total power villain, but pretty garbage. I actually like the little, the mini versions of her so much more than actually her. Now for every bowler hat, there's a bowler hat guy. And in my opinion, he's actually quite complex. Now, in my opinion, he doesn't even fit these three categories especially well, but he takes a blend of them. We know his backstory. We kind of understand that he's just kind of lost, so he's just doing what he can. Now, I get the vibe that he's not absolutely a power villain. I think he's, if anything, he's kind of like a combination between these two down here. But, I mean, really, that just goes to show that you can't categorize every little thing. You can't make everything... Like a tiny, systematic, like, oh, I'm going to place you here, I'm going to place you there. Because there will always be that character who breaks the molds, who will not fit in the molds. I think that's actually this guy. I think he's abs he's he's the only reason that I think Meet the Robinsons is an okay movie. Oogie Boogie, total pleasure villain. You know, we know, we, we get his gist. He's a total Las Vegas style crazy guy. He loves what he's doing. He just loves being evil. He does it for his own fun, his own pleasure. Uh, we don't see him really searching for power. If he was, he probably would be con putting on a conquest of the other holiday lands. But here he is. I think he's at the top because he... On this list, for on this little section here, he's definitely the most sadistic. He's having the most fun with it, for sure. Super iconic. The entire Disney event is basically the Halloween Disney event. That's his event. And that's what puts him at the top of pleasure villains, at least for now. My guy, I I really, really like Hades as a villain. I think he's so fun. I think he's hilarious. But I can't deny that he's merely just a power villain. Uh, I'm going to put him under Scar just because Scar is so iconic. But Hades is so crazy fun. He just kind of uh, lacks that pure evil that would that it takes for me to put him at the top of power. But he is a bit of a sicko. 
I kind of wished that Hades got his own song. I think that could have been really cool. Bit of a missed opportunity there. These guys, they have to be on here. They make such a big impact on the movie. They're basically the only reason the movie exists. The only reason Hercules is half human. Uh, but what are these guys? Technically, they're... I would call them it's what I must do villains. Just because they're Hades servants. But they're kind of cool. It might be weird to see him here, but we don't even know if they would be villains if they didn't, if they weren't told to do such things by Hades. I can't believe I uh, took so long to realize this. This guy has to be over here. Definitely. He's definitely way more interesting than Bellwether. Maybe he might be more interesting than Ursula. But Ursula's just so fun. Ursula has is like, he's cosplayed and stuff. She's in plays. Uh, mm, you can really, she has to be above him, for sure. Come on, get over there. These guys, did they even name them in the movie? I know they give the actual parents' names, but the alien race, I mean. They're totally, it's what I must do, villains. I put them at the top. I actually enjoy Chicken Little, even though the dad is insufferable. He's infuriating. The worst dad I've ever seen in animated history. But anyway, they're totally is what I must do. They're the, so relatable. I mean, saving your child from being captured by, in their perspective, the aliens. Like, you gotta do what you gotta do. Fox and the Hound guy. I would put him at it's what I must do. Even though he's not that interesting. I mean, to him, he's just living his life. That's just how things are to him. Oh, here we go. Dr. Facilier. I love this villain. I love his music, his style, his everything. I, know, I really enjoy the aesthetic of Princess and the Frog as a whole. The new That New Orleans aesthetic just appeals to me. I love the New Orleans Square in Disneyland. So cool, so fun. I'm actually putting him in all three. Because clearly, he's very interested in power. But the circumstances of the movies kind of make him more complex in a way. So obviously he's a power villain, right? He makes deals with people so that he can get them under his thumb so he can use them to get whatever else he wants, huh? But he's totally a pleasure villain, as we can see. In my opinion, the reasoning for this is that he steps on the Firefly guy, Ray, just out of his own sick, sadistic pleasure. He did not need to step on him. He defeated him already, and in my opinion, even if he wasn't who he is, even if he wasn't the voodoo guy, he probably would have just done it at, out of sick pleasure anyway. And he's also an it's what I must do villain, because the forces that he sold his soul to are telling him he needs to get this done, or he's through. They're dragging him, they're dragging him to where they are. So the circumstances of the movie show that he checks all the boxes for these three categories. Not only that, but he's super fun, like I said. He has great voice acting work, great song, great style. In my opinion, uh, completely objectively looking at it, the most complex villain we've looked at so far. All right, we're getting down to it. I'm sure you can see this last row, this last little preview. These are all the guys we have left, guys and gals. So let's get it started. Continuing on with Princess and the Frog. This dude, I forget his name. I don't even want to bother to look it up. But obviously he doesn't care about power. He's just envious. He just wants all the attention that he sees the prince getting. So he's absolutely just a pleasure villain. He's doing sick things just to be, just so he can just have fun. He doesn't care about the power. He just wants the fun. I'll put him right here. This guy, oh, I saw this movie, but honestly, I wasn't paying much attention. I was really, I put this movie on in the background twice. Uh, but from what I gather, he's just a power villain with a little bit of a soft spot, maybe. But I mean, that doesn't overcome his greed. He's better than these guys for sure. Mm, better than all these guys for sure. Over here. He might be better than uh, these two, but I like Atlantis more. 
I'm keeping them above them. Why isn't Kronk on here? Yzma, Yzma, Yzma. I like her. I like... Oh, sorry. I, I think Emperor's New Groove is a really, really fun movie. But if it's not a movie that you saw as a kid, I don't know how much you'd really love it. Anyway. I want to call her a twofer. Clearly, she cares about power a ton. But she's so interested in just herself, her appearance. And from what we've seen, she has her cronks. I mean, clearly, she's a, she gets some fun out of that. So you can be in both of these. But I don't know if you've heard... The Yzma song that was made that was not included in the original movie. But, okay, I really like that song. And I think it adds a bit more a bit more depth to her character, honestly. So, in my opinion, she might be the least complex villain here in the twofer section. But, I mean, I like her a lot. Okay, here we go. Her. Um... I think she's like at the bottom of pleasure villain. I didn't really, I didn't even see the new Cruella movie, but even if I did, it wouldn't affect this movie's placement because we're only looking at animated stuff. Uh, but I mean, she's just so, so bleh. Maleficent. Maleficent's cool. She has a cool outfit, a cool look. But, I mean, it's undeniable that she only cares about power. Put her right here, next to the Evil Queen. Not much to go into there, because we're only looking at the original old movies. King Candy. King Candy. I mean... Does he deserve to be in twofer? I don't know. I feel like originally... Originally... I feel like if we look at the old version of King Candy, it's the turbo version. If we got a story of him when he was trying to leave his game, like maybe he felt empty inside, like how Ralph did, because I would call Ralph a relatively complex villain. If we saw the younger King Candy, he might be too for, but as we see him in the movie, he's just, he's full on corrupted already. There's nothing else going on for him other than he just wants to stay in power. He wants, he wants the crown, that's it. So I can only put him here. I don't even necessarily like him more than these characters, but what he did to Penelope is undeniably thick and cruel, and it's kind of fun when he gets fused with the, the bug things. And here we go. And here we go with the bug things again. These guys, I would call unapplicable. They're just like basically forces of nature. They're they're not thinking. They're just doing what they they're doing. It's kind of like they're doing what they have to do, but they're not even thinking about it, you know. So uh, not applicable. Better than this guy still. Now here we go with Gaston. In my opinion, he is so far he's the ultimate pleasure villain. His actions in the movie are only driven by two things. One, his desire for what he considers beautiful, and and his schoolboy bully antics, which evolve into just plain cruelty in, for the sake of his own fun. In my opinion, he's undeniably enjoyable to watch. I like his songs. Uh, I like how big of a jerk he is. And it's just hilarious how everyone else in town just loves him so much. I don't know how many of you have seen Home on the Range, but Alameda Slim, he has a hilarious, fun, enjoyable song. He's a fun character overall. I enjoy seeing him on screen. But he is shallow, of course. He only cares about the money. I'll put him I'll put him right here, actually. I like him. I just like him more than most of these guys. He's just a little... I mean, he's only driven by money, which in my opinion, probably like the weakest motivation for a power villain. Now, here's a heavy hitter, Jafar. I know he's super popular, super iconic. I think he's really good. I think he's a twofer. Obviously, he's motivated by pleasure. And he just wants, he wants Princess Jasmine. He wants to be king. 
He wants everything. Super stylish, also super gross. And personally, I like to see it in Disney movies where the villain actually gets really, really close to winning. And when it's their own fault that they lost. And he fits both of those. He gets super close. It's because of his own hubris that he loses. Now, personally, Aladdin isn't one of my favorite Disney movies of even the Renaissance. But the movie undeniably has some good music. So there you go, Jafar. Second place in the duper category right now. Now, here's an interesting character. King Louis from the Jungle Book. Clearly, it's a super old movie. Super old character. But I think he's actually very complex. He wants the power of man's red flower. But it seems like it's for the sake of what he believes to be personal development. And in that sense, he almost takes like a philosopher like role on that. Now he wants he wants this power, but he doesn't know what he has to gain from it. It's more like it's almost like he just wants the knowledge and the experience, which I think is a lot more interesting than just power for the sake of power. He doesn't even necessarily want to rule humanity. He just wants to be one of what he believes to be like a, a higher species. So he could possibly be put in power villains, but he's just, there's just an extra layer of complexity there that I have to put him up here with these other guys and even above them. It, if anything, he might even get his own tier. Like he could potentially get his own tier above, above Facilier. But I'll just put him here for now because I'm trying to take I'm trying to just look at it within the system that I've laid out. Okay, LeFou. Uh, I should have put him right after Gaston. I, I don't, I'm not sure what happened there, but... LeFou is just a fun, fun heaven guy. Honestly, his personality is kind of like pain and panic over here. But the difference is he doesn't have to be there. He doesn't have to be next to Gaston all the time. He just is because... He just thinks it's fun. It's just, he's just going about his day. Hey, he knows he's not going to be the one in power guest on. Well, but he's just doing what he finds enjoyable and he likes palling around and bullying other people, I suppose. He gets to go in the center more fun than these other guys to the right of him, but just a, a definitely less so of a villain than anyone to the left of him. So that's his placement. Your Khan is a total sicko. You could say it's just part of his nature, but there's nothing about his nature that would cause him to have such a deep, deep hatred and razor focus on Mowgli. So, he's purely doing it for his own sadistic pleasure. He doesn't get more any more power out of it. He's just taking out his uh, frustrations on him, I suppose. Because he feels threatened by humanity. But I actually don't really like him. I don't find him that interesting. So I'll put him under the food. Even though he's really evil. Really sick. Okay, here we go. I have my number one favorite Disney villain. Total bias towards this guy. Well, it might be because he is... In my opinion, the most complex animated Disney villain in the entire Disney universe. At least as far as movies go. Personal opinion, but I think Cloud Frollo has the best villain song of the entire Renaissance era for sure. And probably the best overall. He is sick and twisted. In Yes, he cares about power. Clearly, we see that in the beginning. He puts himself on the pedestal. He needs to be in that spot. Circumstances of this movie transform him into a pleasure villain. He's just overcome with... I don't know, overcome by something that ain't right. And the saddest part about him, the most despicable part about him, is that he genuinely thinks he is in the right, that he is doing what's right in 
trying to exterminate the gypsies, enforcing his own personal views on and feelings on the entire city of Paris, and he exalts himself over the way he treats Quasimodo. He's actually smart. He's truly so overcome by his wicked desires that, that he just runs out there blindly in a in a fury of not just rage but all these weird emotions that he has and he just dies over it he flings himself into the fire we don't know his backstory like we do with some other characters here but i think within the confines purely of the movie that he's in we see we see him rattle rattle the line on all of these different little categories of the kind of types of villains that there can be. And we even see him struggling with, at least momentarily, he struggles with if he's in the right with his own song. But eventually he goes down that dark path and that's what really makes him a villain. So what do you think? Who is the most complex Disney movie villain, animated Disney movie villain, in your opinion, I landed on Cloud Frollo, but that's solely within the context of this little category system that I came up with, which, I mean, it doesn't have any credentials, so you're welcome to come out with your own reasoning. I'd, I'd love to hear it. In my opinion, this system isn't perfect, but I think, at least in my mind, it makes sense as a way of gauging complexity a little bit, even though it's not perfect. And I plan to use this system to break down and evaluate Pixar villains. So hopefully we can get to the root of who is the most complex Pixar villain. Not necessarily the best villain, but the most complex. And if you'd be interested in that, please stay tuned. That video will be coming out shortly. Please consider subscribing, liking. I really appreciate that you watched to the end. Thank you very much.